Okay, our culture is sick. What can we do about it? Today, we look at some proposed answers from the world and measure them against some biblical prescriptions to hopefully find an answer to the mental health crisis or even epidemic that we're facing today for both kids and adults alike. Thanks for tuning in to Something's Happening Here. May God bless you. I'm Steve Hicks. Hello, friends. Welcome back. Today's Thursday, if you're watching this as we broadcast it in real time. And um, I need to start today's show by commenting about yesterday's show, because if you watched it, you know that we ran long by several minutes. And I would have preferred to actually run even longer, because I have a lot more to say on that very sensitive and difficult topic. Um, but as, as you know, we have to like, be really careful about the words that we use on such topics. And so it, it was just kind of a mess. Our solution to this, right? Our solution to running out of time in this little format and, and being able to talk about these more complex and difficult issues in a larger format is locals, <laughs> okay? Um, we are trying to get you to go to locals.com. We have a page there. Sign up for the free community and soon it will become a supporter community. And once we're inside of that, exclusive community setting, we can talk about these things all day long uh, with the exclusive content that we will provide and Bible studies and whatnot. But you have to go to locals, right? Build up that free community so we can transform it into the paid community. And that way we can solve these problems. The uh, other comment from yesterday, the other comment I have to make is that uh, I had a scripture, but we ran out of time to share it. So in relationship to the two specific issues we talked about yesterday, which is the, the claim that the world is ending very soon and the unrelated claim that boys and girls are interchangeable, um, the scripture I had to share was Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 14. Scripture says, I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it that men should fear before him. And this idea just stands in contrast to the world's ideas. Oh yeah, God made the world, but we're gonna destroy it. Oh yeah, God made boys and girls, but we, we'll just change them around, you know? When we take away the things that God did and said are true, when, when we actually contradict that scripture and say, no, 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 the thing that God did is not really forever, we'll just change it up. Of course that messes things up. Of course that leads to mental illness in our children. So the solution is to live firmly in the reality that God created and to, um, to accept that reality, right? Because warring against it's not gonna lead us anywhere good. So for today, um, we wanna look at some remedies for this crisis, um, more specifically than what I just said. And so to do this, we're actually going back to the same article that we started on on Monday. I think it was Monday we started with this one. Let me just check on that. Uh, Houston, yeah, there it is. So Houston Methodist is going to um, lead us through some proposed solutions. So same article from Monday, poor mental health, fighting the modern epidemic. And a little ways down, it says six ways to improve mental health. And uh, we're just going to go through them point by point. This article says to start your day on a positive note with meaning and purpose. Um, Dr. Jordan Peterson says the same way, uh, same thing in, in a different way. He says to make your bed first thing in the morning. Because that way you start your day with one accomplishment, right? And that, that sets up your day for more accomplishments, right? If you start it all reactionary and without purpose, then your whole day will be reactionary and without purpose. So that's good, you know, worldly advice. Um, prominent psychologists are agreeing with it. What does the Bible say? Well, we get the example of Jesus Christ that we read about in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 35. I believe it's 35. Yeah. It says, Now in the morning, having risen, having risen a long while before daylight, Jesus went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. And this was apparently a custom for him. He'd get up early in the morning and start every day with the Father, right? And to do that, it was not just like setting him up to have a good day, but Jesus had a mission. 
And so he started every morning reconnecting to that mission, reconnecting to God, finding his purpose, finding the grace to execute that purpose. And so if Christ is our example, like I believe he is, that means this is our model as well, to start every morning connecting with God and reconnecting with our purpose, whatever purpose the Lord gave you and put you here to execute. So, all right, that's a good one. Start your day on a positive note like Jesus did, and let's battle our poor mental health that way. Number two, eat healthy starting with breakfast. <laughs> We've all heard it before, says the article, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Third John, and we've used this scripture in the past. Um, we had a whole week long about health, but uh, Third John verse two, because there's only one chapter in Third John, it says, "Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers." And I, I hope it makes sense to us that um, the food you eat is going to have a direct relationship with the health that you enjoy. Uh, so let's eat good things and enjoy good health uh, and, and, you know, calories <laughs> at its most basic level. That, that's what we need. We need energy to continue to live. Um, but let's eat healthy calories as well and watch how that just transforms our life. All right, number three from the article is make time for exercise. Well, exercise, according to this article, is primarily about blood flow and the oxygen that comes with the blood flow. I'll just read it. Physical stimulation improves blood flow to and within the brain and therefore provides oxygen and nutrients that are vital for health and performance. Next paragraph, the brain uses approximately 20% of the body's total oxygen. Therefore, not getting enough oxygen up there will no doubt lead to mental fog and an unfocused and unenergetic mood. Well, we see this supported in the Bible right away on, on like the second page. And <laughs> Genesis chapter two, verse seven, at the formation of the first man, Adam, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Air, oxygen, this life force is so, so crucial that when you don't have enough of it, of course your mental health will suffer, of course. So let's get enough exercise, let's get enough oxygen to our brains and let the brain function the way God made it. Number four on the article is to socialize. Research has shown that social connectedness acts as a buffer from negative mental health effects. All right, so in other words, go to church. or have a group of friends, right? But I'm gonna tell you to go to church. And the reason is because of what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. And some of you are going to be used to using this verse in a different way than I'm about to, but I'll explain myself in a minute. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? That's a question and then verse 17 elaborates, but the idea is that you, right? The Holy Spirit lives in you. You're a temple of God. Most people that I know use that verse as a call to living better, like better health because your body is the temple of God and you keep churches in good working condition. Therefore you keep your body in good working condition. And that's fine. That's a good homiletic way to use that verse, but it's not actually the, the right way to use that verse. Because when you go to the original Greek, and you read it from that way, you realize that the word that we translate into the English word as you, Y-O-U, is a plural word. And in English, we use the same word you for singular and plural, so it's unclear. But in Greek, it's plural. So he's talking to the entire church. He's saying you collectively are the temple of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit dwells within you. The historical context for that is that the Christian church had recently been put out of the temple at Jerusalem. So they were cut off from the, the only like designated worship spot that God's people had known for <laughs> hundreds of years or like the main one. And a lot of the Christians felt just totally dejected and demoralized by that like, because they were not allowed in the temple anymore. So Paul is telling them, you don't need to go to a temple because when you're all collected together, you are the temple. Isn't that beautiful? 
And so, yeah, so we're seeing that. Socialization. When you come together, it invites God into that environment with you. So you're socializing not just with each other, but with the Lord. Of course, that's a good way to be healthy, physically and mentally. Number five, take time for yourself, otherwise known as self-care. Okay, did you know Jesus was a big fan of self-care? It's true. I'll give you one example of it from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14. Jesus um, does a miraculous feeding in chapter 14 here. And following that feeding, uh, we see in verse 20, they all ate and they were filled and they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. So there could have been upwards of 20,000 people there. We don't know the exact number, um, but there was lots and lots of people. Verse 22 says, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And verse 23, when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when the evening came, he was alone there. So there we go. Even Jesus, the living incarnate word of God himself, had to go take time for himself to recover and rest. And so if the Lord himself needs to care for his own self once in a while, then so do you. Self-care is important. And our world is finally waking up to that, right? The kind of burn your candle at both ends, burn the midnight oil, go gray by the time you're 25 mentality of the like 80s and 90s is finally dying. <laughs> and we're recognizing that self-care is really important. Uh, last one on this list is to take sleep seriously. Of course, when you sleep is when your body repairs itself primarily, right? It's really, really important. Americans especially are usually chronically sleep deprived. Um, and so the, the Bible tells us differently. In the story of Lazarus, Christ's friend Lazarus who dies and then is resurrected by Jesus, um, Jesus says in verse 11 that our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Um, Jesus, he really means he's dead. So I'm going to go, go make him alive again. But the disciples don't understand that. So they respond in verse 12 saying, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. Which of course is the truth, right? Sleep is when the body repairs itself. So if you don't get enough sleep, then your body is not able to repair itself properly. This is the world's prescription from Houston Methodist, um, <laughs> but it's also the Bible's prescription. That's what we're trying to show you today. Mental health ultimately comes when we live the way God wants us to live. When we adhere to his Bible principles, his health principles, and we do things his way. It's like we were saying yesterday, when you live in fantasy, destruction will come. When you live in reality, health and healing will come. So I'm going to leave you with that today. I will pray that we all live firmly in reality and that we can gain back some of this mental and physical health that we have lost in our society. And I'm going to invite you back for one more day tomorrow. Let's end the week together when we look to the ultimate final cure, the return of Jesus Christ. I'm Steve Hicks. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you so far this week. May God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow when you come to your subscribed platform. On Facebook, that means you have liked this page and changed your notifications. On YouTube, it means you have subscribed to the Talking Donkey International channel and hit your notification button. Maybe you've gone to TalkingDonkeyInternational.org, in which case you go to the podcast page and bookmark it. Maybe you're on Rumble. Hit that little follow button and make sure you stop by our Locals account as well. Uh, become part of our free community and we will let you know when the supporter option is available. May God bless you with good mental health and good physical health. And I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.